Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. See the Hungry Gamer is back with another episode of the Monthly Menu. And today we are talking about the top five games of March 2024. And if you're wondering, yes, this is very quickly on the heels of the last video. That's just because I forgot to do it in a timely manner last month. So, just a quick reminder, this is the games that I played the most last month, and whenever it wound up being a tie of multiple games that were played the same amount, I go down to the length of play. So whether I maybe played multiple games in one sitting, or one game's particularly long, I give those preference over the number of game sessions per game, and digital plays count for nothing if they're asynchronous, but if they were... Though I do count them if they were done in real time, though I count them as slightly less than an in-person play. Anyhow, jumping right in, first off, the picks for last month, starting off with The List. Yes, we are back on track. We actually knocked two games off the list last month, and that was Kingswood, which was on the previous list, but my wife liked it so much she wanted to play it again, so we actually took that with us to Canada and we were able to play it while we were there, and that was great. And then also we played a game of Cryptid Cafe. Now, Cryptid Cafe is a game that I actually covered before it was Cryptid Cafe. Back when it was called Harry's Place, it was on Kickstarter. It did not fund, but it got picked up by 20th Century Games, and they kind of redid it, and they issued it out again under the name of Cryptid Cafe with some different art, different components, and all of that. And so... I've had it for a, for a while, and it was just kind of a game that sat on the shelf. And finally, we busted it out, and we had a good time with it. It's clean, simple, fast, very cute, and we had a good time playing Cryptid Cafe. Then the next one on the list was the Plum Island Horror. And if you recall, this was the only one that I was like, ah, I actually don't know if I'm going to get this done. All the others I knew I was going to get done or had already done because of whatever. But Plum Island Horror, and yes, I did get it played several times, and... Really, really enjoy it. This really is a good game. It's not necessarily a theme that I'm into, but the quality of gameplay is very, very good. I don't know that I love it at solo because you're playing two factions and they can, and it is actually a longer game than you would think, at least when you're playing solo with multiple factions. I think it's actually going to be, I've, and I've actually only played it solo, but, and I think it will actually be a little bit faster if you play with two players because then you have time to kind of internalize your faction and be thinking ahead and all that. But it's really good. This is a good crisis management game. I really, really enjoy it. And I'm going to be working on having a review out for that relatively soon. Next one was Illiterati. And Illiterati was one, again, that I knew was going to get played because I was taking it with me to the convention in Canada. And I did. And I liked it far more than I thought I was going to. And I bought it. I bought it on Kickstarter because I thought I would like it, but I liked it a lot. That's a very good cooperative game. Really, really, really enjoyed it. Had a great time playing that. Next one on the list is Buru. And Buru is a game that I have was pretty high on back when I did a preview of it back during the campaign several years ago. This was a very slow-to-deliver game. And I had a not-so-great play of it at a local convention, so I wanted to get it back to the table. And so I did. I got to play it with my wife, and it... I really do enjoy the game. It's a very good game. I really like it. And it's one that's probably going to be on my shelf for the long haul. And the last one was Dungeon Alliance. And I knew that was going to get played. We had actually planned it out. I believe we started planning to get this game played on a specific date in January, and we did. And I love Dungeon Alliance. It's great. It's long. As I always say, it's a long game. It is anywhere from three to five hours every time you play. So worth it. Love playing that game, and it's one that I will continually break out several times over the course of the year. So, moving into the top five games of the month. Coming at number five was Res Arcana. And this is one that Don from The Secret Cabal introduced me to at Origins last year. And then when my wife and I happened to be in the area, we went to his house and we played a game, and she loved it. She said, get everything, do it now. So... I got, I found all the expansions on, you know, secondhand and new and all those things. I got some really awesome upgrade stickers for it. And this is just a really good tableau builder. It's just really good. And there's enough cards that every time you play, the way you're going to get your points is different. It's a very, very, very 
good, clean game that I really, really enjoy. Number four on the list is a game called Maximum Apocalypse Wasted Wilds. This is the newest Maximum Apocalypse selection. And this was an odd one to me, because this is I don't usually like apocalypse stuff, because apocalypse stuff is usually zombies. Well, always zombies. I don't like zombies. But this particular one has multiple different types of things that are going on, things that you're facing in this apocalypse. And it has some elements of like a Sentinels of the Multiverse vibe where you have your deck and as you're playing cards from your hand, you're putting out equipment and you're using kind of instant cards that are going to do things. But you also have tiles that you're moving your mini around on and just kind of discovering what is there as you're trying to accomplish certain objectives that are set forth in your scenario book. And this is one that I, it's been on my shelf for a long time. And oddly enough, the reason it sat on my shelf was one I didn't know about the apocalypse thing, but... This was one that the publisher was kind enough to send me, but it's actually not the game that I asked for. I had gotten an email a long time ago and it said, are you interested in covering any of these games? And I said, oh, I'd like to cover this one. And this other one showed up instead. And I said, okay, you know, I, I will get to this game at some point because it's very well regarded and I know some people who really like it, but it just kind of sat there for a while. And finally, when Original Don put Maximum Apocalypse on his 10x10 this year. I was like, you know, this is time. We're going to play this thing. And so I busted it out. I played it at Don's with him, had a very good time, busted mine out, played a solo game. And this is a very clever game. It's, it really is a clever, fun game. I'm very intrigued by it. And I think it's one that's going to play best at, at two or three players, but I really liked it. And I'm really looking forward to going back to it. Really cool mix of kind of crisis management and adventure and RPG. Very, very clever. Really enjoyed it. Number three is Alliterati. I already talked about it a little bit. This is a cooperative word building game. And you have three minutes. You're building these words, trying to fit words into certain categories with certain specific tiles being used in the words. And at the end of every round, the Alliterati are going to attack, which basically means you're going to lose letters that you've been saving. And if you don't use all your letters every round or you use too few letters every round, books get burned. It's a very light, very simple, very easy game to play, but very, very good. Really enjoyed that. That that You're probably going to see a literati back on this list at some point. Brings us to number two. Number two on the list is Adventure Tactics. Adventure Tactics is... It was on my top ten dungeon crawl list that I recently redid. I believe it was just last August or so. And I think it was number six, number seven, something like that. And this is one that... The key joy of this game, and it's a boss battler. I call it a dungeon crawl, but it's really, it's a boss battler. But the key joy of this game is the way you level up your characters, and as you level up your characters, they do different things, and they synergize in different ways. And it, it's a lighter game. It's heavier in the sense that you have all these cards you're kind of searching through and all of that, and the, the organization of the box isn't the best. But it's just really, really fun. I really like it. And this is kind of in the stable of dungeon crawls that I'm slowly working through. I have Galaxy Defenders, which I haven't gotten to the table in forever, and I need to. I have Madara, which I haven't gotten to the table forever, and I need to. I have Oath Sworn, which I recently got to the table. I have T I have Tanaris Adventures, which I relatively recently got to the table when I was kind of going back through my games of the year back in December. And Adventure Tactics is another one of those that I'm just playing through by myself. Oh, and uh, Dungeon Universalis. That's one that I'm playing through myself, but I'm, I'm waiting for some fancy kind of creature tokens that I got off of Kickstarter to show up to kind of go back to that. But these are all ones that I'm just... Every so often, when I'm like, I have the time to put a game out on the table for a week, I pick one and I put it out. And so it was Adventure Tactics time, and I played through, I think, three or four fights, and just... It's so much fun, guys. It's just really fun. And that brings us to number one. Number one was the aforementioned Plum Island Horror. This is a crisis management game where you're trying to usher the citizens off of Plum Island because there were monsters in the lab, the monsters have gotten out, and you have three days to do it, get everyone evacuated, and none of your faction members are really heroes, they're mostly normal people. I mean, you might be playing the National Guard or something, but it's not like you got the rock, it's just... The dude who, on the weekend, is the weekend warrior with the National Guard so he could pay for college type thing. You know, just suddenly in the space. And so these normal people becoming heroes, trying to usher off the island, and you're trying to clear the way so you can get out and get... It's very clever. It is really is a good game. Really, really enjoyed it. 
even though there are a bazillion little tiles and chits and stuff you have to deal with. So that brings me to this coming month's picks for April 2024. First off, we again have the list. I'm confident. I don't know what we're going to knock off it, but we're going to knock something off it. Next one is a recent arrival called Skull Tales Full Sail. And this is the second edition of the widely maligned Skull Tales Full Sail that was released, I don't know, three years ago or something like that. And by all accounts has one of the worst rule books in the history of bad rule books. The game is played in three phases. You have the adventure phase where you're running your pirates around the island and doing things. You have this like port phase where you're like leveling up and you have this sailing phase where you're, well, you're sailing around. And by all accounts, the I think it was the sailing phase as written was unplayable. It just, it literally did not make sense, could not be done, you could not play. And then over time stuff was released and the people who stuck with it and finally got the clarifications and whatever through BGG and all of that, really loved the game. And so now they reached out to me and asked me if I was interested in covering the second edition. The second edition is the same original game, but with the new rules and no expansions. And the copy I have is the exact copy that the new backers are going to get. So it's kind of a review copy. And then all the expansion material that they're going to have, that's going to be the new stuff. There is no printings of that. And so I've been working my way through the rulebook, understanding how to play, and I'm really excited to get this to the table and to try it out. Because I love the version of pirates that we have in media, like the Pirates of the Caribbean, where pirates aren't really horrible people, they're fun adventurers. And so I'm really hopeful. I'm very hopeful and I'm very excited to play it. Next one is Exhibitions. That is... That's from Stonemeyer Games. It was on my Game of the Year list last year. And I haven't played it recently enough. I want to get it back to the table, both solo and in two or three player. I just, I really want to play it again. I'm kind of, I got, I got a, a hankering to play it. So that's Exhibitions. Next is one that I, I have not pulled off my shelf in years. And that is Imperial Spells and Steam. I really like this game. And I think maybe because it's a very big box for what is a relatively light game, it's just kind of sat on my shelf for a long time. In fact, I got the little Kickstarter mini expansion and haven't done anything with it. And so it's time to get it off the shelf because it's just, it's such a fun game. It's so cool. You're making train routes and then anytime you're like, oh man, my route doesn't connect to what I would do, magic! And then suddenly, poof, you make it work. And it's an awesome engine builder. Love that game. Well, I guess we're going to find out. I hope I still love that game. I'm very excited to play that again. And then the last one is the other dungeon crawler, which I didn't mention earlier, and that is Paracle, The Gathering Darkness. So this was one that I, I reviewed late last year, or maybe early this year, and it is a dungeon crawl that uses a website and all the stories on the website. It has a unique style of combat. It truly is a unique style of combat about when you're engaged and how you move around and the way... Spell casting works is very unique, and it's an interesting story, and I liked it. I was very high on it, and it's been sitting on my shelf since then. I haven't gotten it off, and so this is the month I'm hoping to get it off the shelf, because I know they have a new campaign coming, and so I'd like to be able to talk about it intelligently as it comes out. I'm not covering their new campaign stuff at all. I'm not involved with it. I suspect they'll use my review from the previous one, which is totally fine, but I want to be able to talk to you about it if you happen to be interested. So... There you have it, folks. That is the picks for April 2024. Now, I just want to briefly say thank you to Noble Knight Games for being a sponsor of the channel. As always, make sure, if you're looking for used or new games, though definitely used games, that's where you got a lot of stuff there, check out Noble Knight Games. If you use the link down in the description, uh, I get a little bit of bonus credit on top of the credit that they give me as a sponsor. And then also, more importantly, thank you to the channel members. You can see now going across the bottom of the screen the names of our current channel members. As always, I thank you all so much. Uh, I would love to have some more channel members. Please join. Even, even the low level, the 99 cent level, that actually really adds up. It really does. And more importantly, those of you who are in a just, even just that level, it's just showing... It's just you saying, we appreciate all the content that you put out, and I appreciate that you appreciate it, and I bet that you appreciate that I appreciate that you appreciate it, and we can go back and, and we can go around like this all day long, but what matters is, 
Thank you so much for those of you who are channel members, those of you who are at the one of the higher levels. Thank you again so very much. If you are at the mid-range level, you get to see more advanced content. Everyone gets to see some advanced content, but the mid-range gets to see more advanced content. And I do occasionally do a, a mail call show where I put out just my thoughts on the stuff that has just kind of showed up, just kind of immediate, unvarnished. But I'm always available. If you have a type of video that you are interested in seeing for mail call, I'm there. Let me know. And if you've got a game that specifically you want covered, if you're on the mid-tier or higher, you let me know and I'll go out and find that game if I can. And then, of course, we have the highest level, which also lets you play games with me every month on some kind of digital platform, or if you happen to be local, we'll do it in Meet Space. And that can be me teaching you a game, playing a prototype, something you love, whatever. So, in any event, there you have it, folks. That is the monthly menu for April 2024. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, share, maybe become a channel member. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.